So I made something. So I recognize that this video is only going to be really interesting to a small group of people, but I hope the rest of you can enjoy the journey I've been on for the past few months. In a previous video, I talked about live streaming, specifically live streaming first tech challenge events so that people at home can enjoy all the action and you have something to look back on if something interesting happens during a match. In that video, I mentioned using a video switcher device like this one, the ATEM Mini Pro from Blackmagic Design. It's a great little device that allows you to take multiple camera feeds and switch between them for your live stream. But it comes with one very important downside, especially for First Tech Challenge events. And that's that you need to have someone sitting there switching between the various camera feeds throughout the day, especially if you're at an event that has multiple fields or you have multiple cameras involved that you want to show depending on whether you're announcing a score or starting a match. Often you simply can't sacrifice a technical volunteer to be sitting here pressing the buttons on this ATEM all day, and it is a job that takes a lot of attention. You have to be constantly paying attention to what's going on in the room and making sure that you are showing a camera feed that is relevant to the action. So like many technically minded people, especially if you're a software engineer like me, you sit there and wonder, can we automate this? Can we automate switching between camera feeds at relevant points throughout the day during a First Tech Challenge event? And the answer, it turns out, is yes. There is a WebSocket API available from the scoring system. The folks that designed the First Tech Challenge scoring system thought that it might be a good idea to open up a way to get a message when things happen throughout the day, especially if it's the start of a match or you're posting scores. They didn't necessarily know how we would use this endpoint, but they saw the opportunity for creativity and making advanced integrations with the scoring system. So there is a way that we, as programmers, can get information out of the scoring system when things happen, like the start of a match, posting scores, loading the preview of a match, or even randomizing the field. And on the other side, these video switchers from Blackmagic Design are also programmable. You can add macros that have pre-programmed instructions on what you want to happen in the live stream based on the available camera feeds. Putting this all together, I created an application called FTC Switcher. It acts as a bridge between the First Tech Challenge scoring system that will give us a message when things happen throughout the day, like the start of a match or posting the scores, and the ATEM video switchers where we can have pre-programmed instructions on what we want to be shown to the live stream. What this means is if you go through the work to create macros for what you want to show throughout the day, for example, when a match starts on field one or field two, or when a score is posted on either field, you can automate the process of running these macros and switching the camera feeds based on what is happening from the actual scoring system. It means that for most of the day, you can have a hands-free live streaming experience without dedicating a technical volunteer to sit there and switch between your camera feeds, regardless of whether you have one field or two, whether you have many cameras or just one. I've used this application for a few events recently, like the league tournaments for the Orlando Robotics and Space Coast Leagues here in Florida. And I'm really optimistic about how it can make life easier for folks who want to live stream their first tech challenge events in the future. Of course, with any piece of software, there are important limits that we need to keep in mind. For example, I wrote this as a Mac OS application, so you will need a Mac in order to interface with the scoring system and the video switcher. Also, the application has no idea what you want to show when you are doing your opening ceremony, or going to lunch, or doing the award ceremony if you have one, so manual video switching will still be necessary for those portions of an event but likely these are also the times when you have some free technical volunteers to mind the video switcher. And in general, it's important to understand that this is beta software. I've used it successfully now at a few events and I'll be testing it further at a few events coming up, but it may not work for your case. I tried to cover as many general cases as possible, so it works for anywhere from one to four division events and any number of fields in each division. And it's also flexible when it comes to which field you play your finals on, for example. So regardless of how your event is set up, as long as you've gone through the work to create the macros on the video switcher ahead of time, there's a pretty good chance you can automate at least some portion of the video switching for the main portion of your matches, whether they're qualification matches or elimination matches at the end of the day. I encourage you to give it a try. Let me know how it works for you. 
and make a great experience for the attendees at your next event. You can find the download link in the description below, as well as on ftaj.me, a website where I'll be posting all of the future resources for this channel. Please subscribe to support my work in the future, and I'll see you at the field.